Y'all smell that? That's summer. Salty ocean breezes, corn dogs at the ballpark, the sunscreen on my nose. Can somebody actually get my back? Anybody? The sun's really strong. Like, I would really appreciate some help. We all know sunscreen is good for you. It protects your skin from those really harmful UV rays that have been straight up found to cause skin cancer. So sunscreen basically saves lives. It also does a good job of keeping your skin looking young and healthy. But sunscreen could have a dark side, especially in certain parts of Hawaii and Australia, where recent research has revealed that some chemicals in sunscreen have caused significant damage to coral reefs, which are super important to ocean ecosystems. So what's going on? How do we protect our skin and the environment? It's important to mention first that sunscreen is not the only thing destroying coral. There's plastic pollution, a rise in global water temperatures due to climate change, ocean acidification, and overfishing. They're also all contributing to 90% of the world's coral being under threat of dying by 2050. But sunscreen's playing a big role, especially in places where a lot of people like to swim. Let's take a look at what's going on. First, not all sunscreens are harmful to the environment, just a lot of them. Most of the common sunscreens that you'll find at the drugstore contain the chemicals oxybenzone and octanoxate, which absorb skin damaging UV rays before they reach our skin. But they are also the chemicals responsible for harming reefs. A recent study found oxybenzone changes the DNA in coral cells so that mature coral becomes sterile and unable to reproduce. It also causes younger corals to encase themselves in their own skeletons where they starve and die. That's pretty much what happens if coral is exposed to gasoline. Gasoline, sunscreen, basically to coral, there's no difference. And there's more. Oxybenzone is also making coral bleaching worse. Coral bleaching happens when water temperatures rise to around 87 or 88 degrees Fahrenheit, causing coral to expel the algae called zooxanthellae that live in their tissues. The zooxanthellae provide coral with essential nutrients and give them their beautiful colors. When that algae disappear, the coral turns entirely white, hence the name, coral bleaching. Oxybenzone causes coral to absorb more heat, so the temperature threshold for bleaching gets lower. And while coral can technically survive bleaching, it's a huge stressor and increases their risk of dying. You might also now be asking yourself, if sunscreen's doing this to coral, what is it doing to me? Some research has shown that it can mess with our hormone levels, but dermatologists debate whether it's enough to recommend we stop using it and the data is inconclusive when it comes to risk to humans. We have more information on that in the links below. Okay, so you're at the beach and you put on some sunscreen. You head into the ocean and you see a little bit of it drift off into the water. It looks oily, sure, but the ocean is so big. It's not possible that that little amount of sunscreen could possibly have an effect, right? Well, I talked to Dr. Ayana Elizabeth Johnson about this. She's a marine biologist, policy expert, and strong advocate for conserving our oceans. I used to interview fishermen in the Caribbean just to understand what they were seeing as the problems and solutions, uh, how things were changing over time, and they were described to me when a cruise ship would come into port and all of the tourists would slather sunscreen on all over themselves and jump straight in the water and then it would just look like an oil slick of iridescent scuzz on top of the ocean. And so you think it's not a big deal. Um, but it does add up, and so it's much more of a problem in places where there are high densities of tourists than if it's just you know, one person in a remote place. But with you know, almost 8 billion people on the planet, we need to think about these cumulative effects. A study of Hanama Bay, a popular snorkeling spot on the Hawaiian island of Oahu, found that the water had anywhere from 30 to 29,000 parts per trillion of oxybenzone in it. That's a crazy wide range. The toxic limit to coral is thought to be 10 parts per trillion. So basically, the bay is like way over the toxic limit. It could mean completely killing the famous coral reef there. This would be a major loss for both the world and for Hawaii's tourism economy because a lot of people really like to go there to see the coral and wildlife. Hawaii isn't the only place at risk of losing its coral. Similar problems are happening all over the world in places like the Virgin Islands, Israel, and Australia's Great Barrier Reef. These places depend on the coral for a lot of reasons. They bring tourism, jobs, food, etc. But the thing about sunscreen's role in killing coral is that each one of us can do something about it, even if you live in a landlocked state and have never been to the ocean. 
Hawaii's government is doing its part by trying to ban sunscreens that contain the reef-killing chemicals unless they are prescribed by a doctor. And some tourist companies are now demanding that their clients use biodegradable sunscreens that they say are safe for corals. By rivers and, um, and ocean currents, we're really all connected, and so it can seem remote. Um, but even if you don't live anywhere near a beach, you can have a lot of impact on, on what is acceptable. What is, what's okay as far as how we can act as humans on the planet to be part of an ecosystem and not just like always trampling on it. Okay, so what can you do? Well, there are a lot of options for protecting your skin that don't also, you know, kill major ecosystems. There are mineral-based sunblocks that use titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, which is that really thick looking cream that, yeah, it looks a little bit dorky, but there's nothing dorky about protecting coral. And you know, you can just layer up, you know, just put on a bunch of clothes. That usually does the trick without the need for sunscreen at all. You can just grab your bucket hat, your long sleeve shirt, a cape, a towel, whatever, just cover up. So how do you think we should help coral reefs in the ecosystems they support? Are you willing to maybe switch to a new sunscreen? Let us know in the comments. And as always, please subscribe and like and share our videos with your friends. The more people who learn about our impact on coral reefs, the better. And if you want to find out more ways to protect our environment, check out this video about microfibers in our ocean and this one about saving endangered species. And keep coming back for new videos. Till next time, guys.